Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your host, Sage G. So I'm right here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to bring you out a new what if. This being the what if movie to what if now Fumi was Anos Voldigo's reincarnation. Thank you all so much for tuning into this what if. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. Now, with that being said, I don't got nothing else to really announce except the fact that the audio might sound a little bit weird because I'm not using my, you know, original mic. I'm currently using a traveling mic right now because I'm currently traveling and I'm not near my original setup. So I have to make the best of what I have. But besides that, hopefully you guys do enjoy. And with that being said, let's get started. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're responsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, yo You gotta take it slow, you can't be a pro Don't waste your time no more Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? So to begin the whatever, we're now gonna start out with Nafumi's origins Now when Nafumi's born, he would instantly be resurrected as Anos Voldigo As he would honestly announce it straight up in front of his parents but this does not have exactly the best effect, as in in Anos's show, he's actually reacted with a positive light, as his parents react really happy about the fact that their child was born with hyperactive intelligence and hyperactive growth, pretty much just happy to see that they have a son at all. But you see, now Fumi's parents, they much more rather stick with the normal way of things. So when they see their child actually end up talking when, as soon as he's born, they immediately are terrified of him. Especially since they begin to think of him as some sort of demon, which ironically enough he was, except he was the king of them. Now this will actually cause Nafumi to be very ostracized from his family, not that he really cared. As growing up, he would immediately find out that in this world there was no magic, as this was the noble world. And although he, uh, uh, well, although at first he wanted to, you know, show the world his magic and everything, he decided to keep it at bay, as he decided to actually build strength in this world going through its own process and system, as a way of challenging himself. And lo and behold, it wasn't a challenge at all. As now Fumi will actually be known as the youngest company executive, to the point where he actually ends up funding a ginormous business, building it from the ground up, and not only that, but he ends up becoming a billionaire. Now, he does this all in a span of a few years, and after that, his parents would immediately try to actually connect with him. But the thing is, by this point, now Fumi has completely cut them off from his life. He, they were no worth to him at all. In fact, they barely even raised him. Now, this will cause Nafumi's parents to be very upset, as they even tried to sue Nafumi for this, but unfortunately, that was out of their hold, especially since Nafumi had bought the best lawyer. So that means that Nafumi's parents couldn't get even a small bit of his money. Not only that, but Nafumi had practically forced them to just simply disown him, as he was pretty much stated in his own terms that they were not worthy to have him, not the other way around. And soon, after that chapter of his life was over with, he continued living a pretty successful life, all the way until he was the son at the age of 20. But you see, by this point though, now Fumi has gotten quite bored of this world immediately. In fact, if he wanted to take over it entirely, he could have done it with the snap of his fingers. But you see, that was the problem. This world was just way too easy. There was no excitement out there, no one to challenge him, and overall, if he wanted to rule the world, it could be easy. He could do it overnight, or better yet, in a few minutes. As he ends up sighing in boredom, as this actually caused him to just regress, alright? He still makes multiple amounts of money, he still he still manages the entire company, but most of the time, he just spends that time just simply reading manga or doing anything that entertains him. And you see, during a certain day, as Nafumi was currently heading to the bookstore, as he was just doing his daily runs, actually hiding himself because of the fact that he had gotten so popular to the point where even a small glimpse of his face would be instantly recognizable. As currently right now he was looking for a book to read, currently trying to soothe his boredom, this is when he actually stops as he sees a book. Now you see, this book would instantly catch the eyes of Anos, or should I say Nafumi, and the main reason for this one was because of the fact that this book actually holds magic. He could sense it, it was approaching him. As he ends up grabbing the book and actually flipping open his pages, this is when he actually begins to activate his own magic, which yes, Nafumi did have magic in his own world, it's just a simple thing is he didn't really need to use it. After all, everyone was just way too easy, so what's the point of using magic on them? It, it will be not worth his time. But still nonetheless, he activates his magic as he begins to forcibly grab hold of the magic that was inside the book, and this actually ends up causing him to be forcibly transferred into the other world. As this will be where Nafumi will end up getting transferred to the world of the Rising of the Shield Hero. Now when Nafumi arrives, he would instantly arrive to see a bunch of men as every single one of them will be looking at Nafumi in shock. Nafumi ends up taking a look at the entire place before looking down as this one suddenly on his right arm will be none other than a shield. 
Now, now Fumi will look at the shield in a look of interest before suddenly he becomes dissatisfied immediately. But the one thing that does end up exciting him though is the fact that he can sense it. He can breathe it in. He can already tell this world is full of magic. This world, well, although not exactly, you know, as his, it was definitely similar. As after this, we also get introduced to the other heroes, this being Moriyasu, Ren, and Itsuki. As every last one of them would introduce themselves, this is when suddenly the men would then speak up, as they'll begin to explain that they were actually summoned to this world to save it, which causes every last one of them to have a reaction. Moriyasu was pretty happy about hearing this, since he believed that this was something that he was destined for, all the while Ren and Itsuki were completely skeptical about the whole thing. But you see, the thing is, now Fumi, he was already having multiple plans and ideas running through his mind, as he was able to pick up on many subtle hints all around the entire room. For example, although everyone reacted very positively to the other heroes, when it came to him, he could already tell it. He could feel the small bit of terror coming from the men's eyes. And more precisely, they were more staring at, not at him, but more at the shield, as it seems to symbolize something. Now, before Nafumi can actually speak about this, this is when suddenly the men would actually bring the heroes as they get introduced to the king. Now, when the heroes are actually meeting the king, he begins to explain why exactly he summoned them, as well as explaining about the circumstances that's been going on. Now, while he's explaining everything, Nafumi is able to pick up on it more. The negative emotions that are building up in the man, and all that was directed only towards him. And although he tried his best to hide it, this being the king, Nafumi was able to pick up on it immediately. The way this man sent him a small little glare, the way this man seemed to completely ignore his presence or try to at least, and overall just the way that this man every single time he even looks at Nafumi, you will, there will be a slight twitch of his knuckles, almost insinuating that he's going to clench his fist in anger, it already proved enough about the fact that this man already had it out for him. Now after explaining everything to the heroes and asking him to help, this is when suddenly Moriyasu, Ren, and Itsuki will all announce that they will actually end up helping. In exchange that after they help, they do end up returning back to their homes. And now Fumi, after hearing this, instead of agreeing with them, he actually begins to chuckle, and this causes everyone to turn their attention onto him. Now the king, he tries to act all sincere and wholeheartedly towards the shield hero, but now Fumi is able to detect it. The disdain in his voice, the way he's already talking a little bit snarky towards him. This is when now Fumi begins to pretty much state that they were over here kidnapping him, and not only that, but pretty much forcing all of them to fight a battle that was unfortunately they had no part of at all. Now the truth be told, Nafumi had no care about it at all, but the thing is, he really wanted to make sure that the other heroes realized what exactly is going on here. And instead of every single one of them actually taking account of this, well except for Ren since he was actually thinking about all this, this is when Moriyasu would then step in as he begins to pretty much berate Nafumi for thinking that way, as he pretty much states that these people need their help and that they must help them trying to show off his true hero-like persona. Now Fumi, after hearing this, just looks at the man and scoffs as he completely ignores Moriyasu's presence, or considering him as small as a fly. And this pisses off Moriyasu, but before there can be any more conflict, unfortunately, too much things were going to happen today and not only that, but they needed to make sure to gather everything for the heroes, as that's what the king had stated. As after that, he will end up telling every single one of them to go to their proper rooms, ordering some men to take them there. As after that, we will then see all the heroes end up leaving and end up going to their rooms so that way they can prepare for the next day. And while the other heroes actually go to rest, Nafumi will be the only one awake as he will be listening in on the king. As currently right now, deep down in his own palace, you will see the king screaming out and cursing the name of the shield hero. As although he already had just arrived to this world, he was already cursing him thinking that he was going to do something bad. And he did, as the man literally insinuated that they kidnapped them. When seriously, they don't really need the help of the shield hero, they only need the help of the other three other heroes, he assumes at least. And you see, while the king was going on this rant, pretty much cursing the shield hero's existence, currently right now, watching all this and having a sinister smile on her face will be none other than mine, as she was already crafting a small little bit of a plan. Unfortunately, they did not know exactly what type of terror they were about to inflict on themselves, as Nafumi, after listening and actually getting a visual on everything that was going on, he would have a soft smile on his face, or considering that everything was just amusing to him, but he was interested to see how everything will play out, as we now move on to the next day. Now by the next day, already the king had assembled a bunch of, a, a, a bunch of companions for the heroes, as every last one of them would be lined up, and just like in the main timeline, every last one of them would go to the other heroes, and none would go to Naofumi. 
and the king seeing Nafumi would actually begin to apologize to him, but deep down the king was laughing and Nafumi could tell. As the man had a certain amusement in his eyes and the way he was talking, there was already a little bit of mockery inside of it. As just like that, in the main timeline, this is where Mai would then step up, as she would begin to announce that she would actually party with the shield hero, much to Moriyasu's dismay. And although everyone looks at her and you know feels very you know proud of her and everything for trying to support the shield hero, Nafumi was already on to her little schemes, as he could already tell what was dancing to her little mind. Now after this, everything will proceed just like it does in the main timeline, as Nafumi will be taken by mind to the training area, as this one actually we will then meet the other heroes as they begin to actually tell Nafumi to have good luck, considering the fact that they believe that the shield is the weakest one. But you see, Nafumi, after hearing this, just scoffs, as this is when he ends up looking at the level, well, at the level system that was appearing right in front of him. And as it does appear, this is when suddenly it will begin to glitch and lag. Cause you see, the thing is, Nafumi's stats were all off the charts, as literally all his attack, his HP, everything was above 9,000, and the system just simply couldn't handle it. And Nafumi, after seeing this, this, decided to just put the system out of its mystery, as he ends up charging a little bit of his magic power into his fist as he simply just slams it on the system, completely destroying it and pretty much allowing Nafumi to become an anomaly. Now Nafumi after destroying the system, he would actually end up taking away the shield and ends up tossing it aside, not seeing any use in it. And due to the fact that Nafumi destroyed the system, the shield does not return to him, which means he's actually able to wield other weapons. Now as Nafumi begins to walk away with mine following him as she was actually wondering what happened to the shield and everything because she didn't see Nafumi toss it away. This is where we then begin to see Nafumi grind. Or should I say, this will be the things that now that mine would see that would actually completely unnerve her and actually make her feel a little bit terrified with her plan. As Nafumi would show her a little bit of his power as immediately he would get swarmed by a bunch of monsters and as he does end up getting swarmed by them, he obliterates every last one of them with a simple fire spell. And you see, the thing is, this would actually very much terrify mine is in the fact that there's no way the shield hero can do something like this. As she ends up contemplating, I, I'm sorry, she ends up complimenting Nafumi and acts like completely like a fangirl and everything, Nafumi could already tell that deep down she was already getting the seed of fear. As truth be told, mine was already having some second thoughts about her plan. But yet, you know how she is, she's just extremely stubborn and if she doesn't get what she wants, then she's gonna get even more stubborn and even more worse. So even though she felt a little bit of fear of Nafumi, she felt as if everything was going to work out fine. After all, she's the king, the king's daughter. What can Nafumi do? He can't even touch her. As after shaking off her feel and reassuring herself that everything was going to work out fine, you'll see Mine trying to get her plan into motion. As she tries to get Nafumi to buy her expensive things, she tries to show Nafumi the most expensive places, and even tries to get Nafumi drunk. But you see, the thing is, Nafumi would decline on everything she was doing, as no matter what she tries, unfortunately, nothing will work out. As Nafumi would just completely focus on much more important things, such as getting the layout about the kingdom, interacting with certain people since he was already a pretty good eye when it comes to doing business, and that was the main thing that was going through his mind. After all, Nafumi could already tell that conflict was going to arise, as he could already tell that the king and his daughter was already going to cause trouble for him, not that he really cared. In fact, if he truly wanted to, he could just simply wipe out the entire kingdom and be done with it. But you see, that will be way too easy, and he's not really in the mood for things to be too easy. He wants to enjoy this world. So due to that, he was going to end up enjoying it. Man, what better way to enjoy it than humiliate some dumb king and his daughter. And not only that, but humiliate the entire kingdom by showing that he, a person who literally just arrived to this world, can make both money as well as have much more stable land than the entire kingdom. As that just seemed like the biggest F you to the entire kingdom's face. As after going the entire day of making or well, already setting up connections and everything, eventually it'll be nightfall as once again mine is trying one last desperate attempt to get Nafumi to drink, but unfortunately Nafumi just simply ignores it all. In fact, he just simply order, orders some juice and just chugs it down. As after that, it'll, it'll eventually be time for Nafumi to go to rest as he ends up leaving the area with mine just being upset about the whole thing and glaring at Nafumi's back. As we now change scenes to the dead of night. As we see Nafumi currently laying down and enjoying himself, this is when suddenly he ends up hearing his door open, as he could already assume who was doing this. This will be mine as she was currently making her way to Nafumi's room and was already ready to incriminate him. As she glares down at Nafumi before suddenly smirking as she leaves some of her lingerie there as a way to, you know, make Nafumi be looking like a criminal. 
But as she does this though, this was something the door would then slam shut. She ends up looking at the door in shock as she tries to open it but unfortunately it wasn't working. And as she does, this one suddenly she ends up turning to Nafumi only to be in shock as she reels back. As currently staring her down face to face will be none other than Nafumi as he had a scary blink expression on his face. Now mind, although she will be caught off guard, she will try to persuade Nafumi acting all sweet and innocent telling him that she's just here to check on him. Only for, only for Nafumi to tell her to shut up. And as he does, he actually releases this pressure which causes mine to do so. And this is when Nafumi then looks at the lingerie that, well, mine had left behind. And as he does, he walks over to it and picks it up as he takes a look at it before looking at mine. Now mine is already having an incredible amount of indecent thoughts thinking that Nafumi was going to do something to her, only for her to be surprised as Nafumi, instead of actually doing anything to her, he will straight up insult her, telling, telling mine that he'd much rather see a pig in this than her, as he believes that the pig can pull it off 10,000 times better than her. And after hearing this, Mine could feel her pride get damaged as she feels an immense amount of anger as Nafumi will burn the lingerie to nothing. And as he does, this will cause Mine to actually snap back to being all terrified and everything as she realizes who exactly she's dealing with. Now once Nafumi had finished burning the lingerie, this is when he ends up turning to Mine and as he does, he sets a pressure on her. Now Mine ends up collapsing down to her knees, barely breathing, as this is when Nafumi begins to simply state to her that he will let her go off with the warning. As well as telling her that if she dares to try anything like this ever again, and not only that, but if her as well as her father try anything against him, then he will gladly retaliate, and each time will be worse than the last. As after this, Nafumi ends up releasing the pressure as he ends up walking away back to his bed, and as he does, with a simple flick of his wrist, he will end up sending Mine flying out of his room and locking the door. As Mine, after getting sent flying out of Nafumi's room, she will feel herself trying to reel in the fear as she felt her entire body shaking. And as she does, she ends up scuttering away, trying to look for assistance as a way to get the, the shield hero to be arrested for what he had done. For the next, for the next day, Nafumi will be there laying down and resting, as currently right now, he will be enjoying a blissful morning. Only for that morning to be completely ruined, as Nafumi, who is currently sleeping, will then have his door busted open by a bunch of magic guards. As they end up running in, and they pretty much begin to state to Nafumi that they have a warrant to search his place, and not only that, but Nafumi has to come along with them as a way to pay for his crimes. And Nafumi, after hearing this, just simply opens his eyes and tells them that he has not gotten enough sleep. As obviously, Nafumi needed 8 hours of sleep, alright? That was something that was required. He had read about it in the other world. As this is when Nafumi, with the flick of his wrist, ends up sending every last one of these guards out of his room, and not only that, but he ends up locking the room and ends up setting up a generous barrier to prevent them from entering again. Not until he finishes his nap. And for the next following hours that went by, it will just be simply of all the guards of the kingdom trying to burst open Nafumi's room, but unfortunately they were unable to do anything. It got so bad to the point where the other heroes end up arriving as they try to help out, but unfortunately, no matter what they do, this barrier was protecting Nafumi. All of all, Nafumi would sleep there, completely bliss, and not only that, but he doesn't even hear the sound, as this barrier bo blocks out sound as well. As eventually, after getting the proper nights of rest, Nafumi ends up releasing the barrier as he ends up walking out the room calmly. And as he does, this is when Nafumi would then be faced with Moriyasu, Itsuki, and Ren, as every last one of them will have a degree of hatred and disgust in their face. Now, this is where we now do a time skip. Now, eventually, Nafumi will be escorted to the king's presence, and the entire way, Nafumi could already feel the glares that were getting at him, as apparently the news had spread drastically. And you see, after hearing this, Nafumi can do nothing more but actually smile in pure new amusement as he couldn't believe just how foolish Mine truly was. After all, he made her a warning, but it seemed as if she didn't understand. So with no other choice, it's only proper that he retaliates. As eventually Nafumi, Nafumi would arrive at the, in front of the king's presence, this is when he would then end up hearing his supposed crime, as apparently he's been charged with the crime of threatening and assaulting the king's daughter. And this causes jittering from the entire peanut gallery as many people end up looking at Nafumi with disgust and anger and the heroes especially were glaring at Nafumi, pretty much explaining what he did was wrong and that it didn't matter if they were in the other world. As the king will be glaring at Nafumi with as much hatred as he can, he will be even more pissed off as after getting ridiculed and after getting a bunch of insults thrown at him, Nafumi would show that he does not care at all as in fact he will be laughing and showing a sign of amusement at the entire situation. And Moriyasu couldn't stand this as he approaches Nafumi, grabbing him, grabbing him by the collar as he asks Nafumi if he feels no remorse at all. And Nafumi, this entire time, he had kept an amused expression all the way until Moriyasu had touched his clothing. And that's just one thing, you never mess with a man's clothing. 
as this is when Nafumi with a dead serious expression then tells Moriyasu to buzz off. And as he does, Moriyasu would actually be sent flying and crashing through the walls of the kingdom, surprising everyone. As Ren and Itsuki actually look at Nafumi surprised since they didn't expect him to be this strong as they all tend to prepare him for combat, this is when the king then orders his guards to capture the shield hero. But as they even try to approach him, this is when Nafumi then tells them to freeze. And it seems as if his words were having the right effect, as everyone in their right mind then stopped moving. Heck, some of them even stopped breathing. As Nafumi begins to release this pressure, this pressure will fall upon the king, mine, and everyone in the room as he decides to make himself clear. As he explains that he was completely innocent and not only that, but the king and his daughter are a liar and are actually trying to conspire against him. Now immediately, the king, although this pressure was terrifying, retaliates with a stutter, explaining that there was no way that was even possible, and tells Nafumi that he's just trying to make himself seem like the victim here, when it was his daughter that was affected. But you see, the thing is, Nafumi, after hearing that, just smirks, as this one suddenly, Nafumi went to release the pressure, as he acts all gittery, all smiley, all innocent, as this when he suddenly he ends up forming this weird glowing orb. And as he does, this is when Nafumi ends up throwing the orb into the air, and as it does, it begins to play a recording. As they will see the true nature of both the king and his daughter, as they will hear the king cursing out the shield hero and everything for simply existing, and they will see Mine placing the lingerie in Nafumi's room. As everyone will look at the entire recording in shock. All the while, Nafumi will end up taking a look at every single one of the reactions before focusing more on the king and his daughter. The king couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that the shield hero was ruining something for him once again, as he'll be cursing out Nafumi mentally, all the while Mine couldn't believe that he was actually able to record her in the act. She couldn't believe it. As she ends up dropping her old, her old innocent and her victim persona, as she actually glares at Nafumi. Now, immediately as that glare appeared, it would then disappear, as this is when she would then begin to burst out in tears, explaining that that video was fake and that she would never do that. And this ends up causing everyone to have a very conflicted expression as the entire time Mine is trying her best to act like the victim here. And this actually gets a handful of people to, you know, believe her and the king and actually believe that the, the shield hero was actually tampering with the footage. All the while Moriyasu was completely on board with Mine and honestly, this was more than just simply Mine itself. Truth be told, he was jealous of Nafumi. The power he showed, that, that power shouldn't have been his. It should have been meant for someone like the spear hero, you know, someone who was meant for combat purposes, not someone who was meant to protect others while being weak himself. As that's what he believed the shield hero is. That's what he believed the shield hero should be. Not someone strong. Not someone powerful enough to send him flying with a single breath. As he ends up glaring at Naofumi and once again tries to reassure everyone that what Mine is saying is true. Now, once again, not many people are convinced, Ren and Itsuki are still confused about the whole thing as he couldn't believe that Moriyasu got sent flying and not only that, but Nafumi was already here showing evidence. As this is when Nafumi didn't ask the king and his daughter for their own evidence. And immediately after hearing this, the king ends up screaming at Nafumi telling him that his daughter is enough evidence, as Mine would continue screaming and crying hysterically, acting as if she's the victim. But unfortunately for the king and daughter, that was not going to work on Nafumi. As this is when Nafumi then tells him to actually show even a little bit of his DNA that came from the girl, or anything that really shows that it was him or that he even had any physical contact with the girl at all. And this causes Mine, as well as the king, to freeze up a bit. Because you see, the entire time that Mine has actually partied with Nafumi and spent the entire day with him, Nafumi has not once in the entire time even touched, not even touched Mine, not, a, not even a simple handshake. Not even like, you know, a simple shrug on the shoulders, nothing. He kept a fair distance away from her the entire day. As this put both Mine and the King in a very bad position. And to make it even worse is the fact that they couldn't exactly leave the clothing there as they intended to. As even if Mine were to fail on that plan, they actually planned to have one of the guards supposedly find the lingerie in Nafumi's room. But unfortunately, the recording was already showing that Mine had left it there on purpose. So overall, Nafumi had trapped both the King and Mine in their lie. As now many people did not believe the king and honestly were really skeptical about the whole thing. Even Ren and Itsuki were not sure to, to, who to believe, although Amoriyasu was trying to make them believe that Nafumi truly did what he did. Eventually over time, the king sees all this distrust that was thrown at him and he has enough of it as he screams at the top of his lungs that he's the king and everything he says shall go, as he orders the knights to capture Nafumi. But just as they were approaching Nafumi though, Nafumi ends up smirking as he tells them that they're not even worth his time 
as he tells them all to buzz off, doing the same thing as he did to, to Motoyasu to every last one of them, sending them all flying. As Nafumi will look at the king and his daughter, he sends them both a smirk, pretty much already showing that the next time they try to come after him, things were just going to get worse and worse. And Mai would actually remember that warning, as she remembers how Nafumi told her that just last night, and she shudders as she could already tell that this was already something very bad for them. And you're telling me that it could get even worse? And that terrified her. Motoyasu, after seeing the fact that Nafumi was at the on nonchalant acting as if he was free, he couldn't handle it anymore, as he decides to actually try to attack Nafumi with his spear. Now, this actually caused the king and his daughter to look at Motoyasu very happy, especially the king, as he's actually hoping that Motoyasu could put an end to the shield hero here and now. But as Motoyasu was approaching Nafumi, this is when Nafumi would do something shocking to everyone, as Nafumi would then grab a hold of the spear and suddenly just rip it out of Moriyasu's hand, as he would then slap Moriyasu with his own spear in front of everyone, shocking every last one of them as Moriyasu would be knocked unconscious. Everyone would look at Nafumi in pure disbelief, all the while Itsuki and Ren couldn't believe it themselves, as they couldn't believe that Nafumi could actually use another weapon, it made no sense, every last one of them had to stick to their respective weapons, and they could not wield others. As Itsuki would then demand Nafumi to explain why he's doing it, as this is when Ren would then simply state that Nafumi is cheating. And this ends up causing many whispers to fall around the entire room, which actually gets the king to grin as he begins to call out Nafumi for cheating. Although he doesn't exactly know what Nafumi is cheating on, except for the fact that he stole from the shield here and everything, he begins to call Nafumi a cheater and soon everyone else begins to fall in line. As Ren and Iski, although they did not believe that Nafumi, you know, assaulted mine and everything, they do believe that Nafumi is cheating. After all, everyone has to stick to respect the weapons, even if their weapons suck. And Nafumi would take all this ridicule and insults, and he ends up looking at every last one of them and ends up smirking, as he asks them what exactly they're going to do about it. And this caused everyone to tense up. As the thing is, what exactly are they going to do about it, huh? They can't touch him, they're not stronger than him, and even if they were to try anything, he could demolish them in an instant. As Nafumi pretty much makes it very clear that no matter what they do, no matter what they say, he's in control. And he made it very clear. As he gives a look to Ren, Itsuki, Mine, the King, and of course, pathetic Moriyasu, who's slowly getting up from the ground after getting knocked out in a daze. As Nafumi ends up tossing the weak spear away as he walks away from everyone. The King tries one last desperate attempt to command Nafumi, but Nafumi ends up looking at the King with a malicious smile as after that he ends up walking away. Mori also ends up cursing out at Nafumi, telling him to fight to come back here and fight him like a man, but unfortunately, Nafumi had already left. As the last thing we end up hearing is Mori Yasu screaming at the top of his lungs, with the king doing the same thing. As this is where we now do a time skip. As we see Nafumi currently making his way through the streets of the kingdom, Nafumi will end up getting his fair share of glares as well as looks of pity. Cause you see the thing is, in this timeline, the whole opinion on Nafumi is extremely divided. As on one hand, some people want to actually believe the king and his daughter, many people actually believe in Nafumi, as they saw the evidence that he provided as well as the simple fact that he remained calm throughout the entire situation, even though so many odds were stacked against him. And thanks to Nafumi having half of the community actually you know, support him and actually understand that he didn't do it, this actually allows Nafumi to have a very easier time in the kingdom. And speaking of easier time in the kingdom, this is where we then see Nafumi then make his move. As you know how I said earlier on that while Mine was trying to get Nafumi to drink and buy her expensive clothing, you know, trying to trick him, Nafumi was talking to people, trying to establish a co communications, that's exactly he decided to touch upon. As many vendors, as well as many people he was interested in opening up business with, had immediately actually rushed over to Nafumi after finding out that he was a hero. Yes, by the way, Nafumi did not mention that he was a hero until now. And even though Nafumi has quite a biased opinion on him, still nonetheless, a support from the hero will be extremely great, as they decide to actually team up with Nafumi and actually try to establish business with him. And this will be the field where Nafumi would thrive in. As thanks to his extensive knowledge of running a business back in the original world, this allowed him to have even better knowledge in this one. And it's thanks to this knowledge that Nafumi is actually able to make a pretty decent amount of profit in such a short amount of time. As he's actually able to have uh, connections, and not only that, but he's able to have trade routes from both the underground and the surface. Now, he does this so that way he's able to keep up with appearance, but the underground is where he gets most of his money. And he's able to connect with people much quicker, and not only that, but gain a large amount of money at the same time. Now, Nafumi would do all this, and he would do it mostly by himself. 
but the thing is, as much as he's able to do this by himself, he does believe that it gets kind of boring. As he ends up walking through the kingdom with many people smiling at him while some glare and try to get away from him, this is when he will then end up spotting a very shady man. As he ends up walking to the man, the man would be there and he would actually be surprised to be encountered by the sh very shield hero himself. As he begins to talk to Naofumi, acting all friendly. Now he begins to ask Naofumi if he is in need of a companion or someone to actually help him and Naofumi just blatantly tells him no, but does tell him that he's deeply interested in what he had to offer. And the man, although at first was very disappointed, he ends up smiling as he decides to take <clears throat> sorry, as he ends up smiling as he decides to take Nafumi to the area where he was talking about. As this man will be the slave trader, the one who sold Nafumi Raftalia in the main timeline. He begins to show Nafumi every single one of the slaves he had captured, pretty much explaining their species, their abilities, their uses, everything about them, while Nafumi would just pay close attention to every last one of them. He sees all their different purposes and abilities, he could, he could tell them all just by a single glance. As the man continues listing off about which one would be best for Naofumi, this is when Naofumi would then hit the man with an unexpected question. How much for the whole thing? Now the man will be very confused as he begins to ask Naofumi how much for what until Naofumi then blatantly tells him how much for the whole business. And this man will be in shock, he couldn't believe it. He asked Naofumi if he was serious only for Naofumi to then just tell him to name the price. And this man felt as if he hit the gold mine. He looks at Nafumi and begins to state a very outrageous price, giving Nafumi a deadly serious stare. And Nafumi would stare at the man as well, as both of them would not break eye contact. As although on the outside the man was trying to show off his very calm and composed side, on the inside, the slave trader was honestly deeply terrified of Nafumi, as he thought that Nafumi was going to beat him up or really show him the power of a hero. As he stares at Nafumi wondering what's his next move, he would then be thrown off guard as he would hear Nafumi actually end up chuckling. As Nafumi tells and explains to the man that that pricing was just completely disrespectful to his business. As this would Nafumi would then shock the man by not only giving him exactly the amount he wanted, but actually doubling it. The man couldn't believe it as he looks at the generous bags of money as he asks Nafumi why exactly he did this until this would Nafumi actually gives him a proposition. Telling him that he can actually earn that and more if he actually works for Nafumi. And the man after hearing this would almost completely agree instantly as he couldn't believe that he was getting such a good deal. As after this point, after getting this much amount of money and after getting promised that he's going to earn more, this man literally is going to devote himself for the rest of his life to Nafumi if it meant that he can continue getting this amount of money. As after this, Nafumi and the man would continue talking to each other as the thing is, Nafumi actually wanted to change up things. Instead of just simply turning them into slaves and giving them off, Nafumi actually decided for all of them to work for him, as he was going to actually use them as employees for the company. He was going to use them as a way to trade certain items and everything all across the entire kingdom and even to farther regions. And not only that, but he was going to end up establishing bases and more. And the slave trader, after hearing all of Nafumi's plans, just continues praising him and completely just worships him, with Nafumi telling him to calm down and just do the task he had assigned him to, to which the man would gladly do so. As now the man would continue hunting down for slaves to, you know, work for Naofumi, but Naofumi actually plays certain rules on him. This being the fact that he's not allowed to actually treat them badly, and not only that, but he's supposed to welcome them warmly, and not only that, but make sure that, they're, that he's not stealing from others pretty much. He's not supposed to take ones that already have a home, or ones that already have someone to belong to pretty much. And the man would full heartedly agree with that, so pretty much he's just looking for people who are looking for jobs and a bunch of other things. As Nafumi, after making sure that the man does what he says, he would then go back to the rest of the slaves that he had currently gotten. He ends up removing the slave press that was placed on all of them as he ends up telling the man not to put any more of them on any of the new ones he ends up getting. As thanks to this, this actually allowed many of them to, to move freely and have their own free will. As after making sure that every last one of them were free of the slave crest, this is when Nafumi would then gather them all into one place as he explains to them about the rules that they're going to follow, or if they want to follow. As he gives them a proposition, it's either that they work for him or they can end up leaving, go back to their homes in the wild. And this actually caused many of them to stop and pause, as actually few of them end up leaving the area immediately, while some actually stay behind, wondering what Nafumi could offer them. And Nafumi, seeing a large majority of them sticking behind to see what he has to offer, he ends up smiling as he begins to explain to them their proposition, as overall they're going to be working for Nafumi from now on. And not only like that, but they're going to be given homes, they're going to be given clothing, food, pretty much everything that they need in life, he's going to end up taking care of it. 
and not only that, but they're going to get paid at the end of it all. And after hearing this, many of them were very shocked, as even the ones with very simple minds, they all immediately respect Naofumi, as they actually bow down to him. And they will not be the only ones, as soon, one by one, many if not all the slaves that were captured by the man would all bow down to Nafumi as this will be them swearing their allegiance. Nafumi looks at every last one of them with a smirk as he tells them to come along as they have a lot of work to do. As after this, we can now do a time skip. So by this point of the story, Nafumi has already made himself quite known in both the surface as well as in the underground, as many people have come to respect him. Even those that did not like Nafumi, you know, thanks to the announcement from Mine and the King, are slowly, but, are slowly but surely coming around to actually respecting him, and even some getting to like him. As Nafumi was really showing off the public image as someone who truly had no consciousness or any guilt at all, since it seems as if he's the one who's never done anything bad, and while at the same time could not be said for the king and his daughter. As after finding out about Nafumi's business, as they actually found out about it from the surface and everything, they actually tried to shut it down. But they actually were put in their place thanks to Nafumi, as Nafumi was instantly able to disarray and completely obliterate any false charges that the king may throw at him. And the king was deeply upset at this, as he tried to order his men to arrest Nafumi, but the unfortunate thing was Nafumi was just way too strong, so they couldn't even do it. And they couldn't shut down the business because they had no viable cause. So overall, Nafumi was the one who was completely in control. This made the king look at, look an extremely bad light, mostly because of the fact that he was just shutting down a business for simply existing. And the king, after hearing so many rumors about him and seeing how people were changing their views on him, he couldn't handle it as he tries multiple times to get the guards to arrest Nafumi, knowing that it wouldn't work. And not only that, but he was so desperate for the people to actually see things the way he did, to really show that the shield hero was evil, that he was the devil. And things were not looking good for mine either, as she was pissed off by the fact that Nafumi was doing better than her precious spear hero. And it's thanks to that thought process that she actually tried to use the king's influence to take over a neighboring village for Moriyasu. But unfortunately, that village was under the control of Nafumi. Now this ends up leading to quite a dispute as Mine tries to flex the fact that she's actually the king's daughter once again, trying to show the fact that Nafumi has no control here. Only for Nafumi to actually surprise her as he actually shows her that he has actual true ownership over this entire land thanks to the queen of the kingdom. And this surprises Mine as well as puts her directly in her place as she realizes that Nafumi now has connections to the queen. As thanks to the spies that were watching Nafumi ever since he entered into this world, he was able to take notice of them by the way. He had communications with them and he, and he was able to find out what exactly their purpose were as he realized that the king was pretty much doing everything out of his ass and was not really thinking anything you know, through. This ended up causing both his kingdom as well as the rest of the people to be in danger, and the queen was very worried about that, so, de so she decided to send her personal spies so that way they can end up helping out Naofumi as well as helping out the king. And mine, after seeing the fact that she was currently in checkmate, could not handle it as she tried to challenge Naofumi to a race, to which Naofumi ends up accepting. Now, it will be Moriyasu versus Naofumi, and just like in the main timeline, Naofumi is able to win with relative ease. As this ends up causing Moriyasu to be even more pissed off, and not only that, but this causes mine to be extremely pissed off as well. As you now skim forward a little bit of the story, all the way to the first wave, as Naofumi would actually end up teleporting there just when the event was about to occur. He was actually here for a certain business, but unfortunately the wave actually arrived as soon as Naofumi did and also just when the other re the other heroes would arrive as well. Now immediately after seeing Nafumi, the other heroes just completely ignore him as they all rush towards to face off against the, well, boss, while Nafumi just shakes his head ignoring them as he focuses on actually, you know, helping around the, the small village. Now Nafumi does this and is able to do so for the entire wave, protecting the entire village and causing more people to have a positive opinion on him. As after taking care of the boss, eventually all the heroes will end up getting paid for everything, except for Naofumi as he blatantly does not want the money at all, as after that it will be finally time for a banquet. Naofumi will be enjoying himself as he will be just calmly eating some cake, as he will be enjoying the sweets that they had to offer. Say what you will about the kingdom, but at the end of the day, they did have a variety of options when it comes to food. As Naofumi was enjoying this though, this is when suddenly Raftalia would actually enter well, more precisely, she would actually sneak in as she appears right beside Naofumi. As she begins to explain to Naofumi about everything that has occurred, as well as giving Naofumi the latest update. 
Now Nafumi tries to tell her to calm down, giving her a piece of cake and trying to act all friendly, and this ends up catching the attention of Mai and Moriyasu. Now Moriyasu had already made the assumption that, well, Nafumi was doing something evil to the girl, and Mai actually tries to continue egging on that thought by stating that that girl must be a slave to Nafumi. This pisses off Moriyasu immediately as he rushes at Nafumi and actually tries to grab a hold of his clothing once again. But unfortunately, as he does, he feels himself hit by lightning, causing him to stumble back and hold his arm, wincing in pain. Now, Man rushes over, screaming at Nafumi for dare attacking the spear hero, as everyone ends up looking at the scene. Nafumi ends up ignoring them as he ends up listening off to more of the reports that Raftalia is giving him. All the while, Raftalia will be explaining everything in a very stoic and serious expression. Although deep inside, she will currently be laughing and giggling at the fact that she got Nafumi's attention. As after explaining everything, Nafumi tells her that everything is fine, and he tells her that, he can head, that she can head off now, or better yet, she can stay here and enjoy the cake, this being the desserts that they had here. Now, Raftali would actually agree to this as she continues to enjoy the evening, all until Moriyasu would then suddenly snap, telling her that she doesn't need to follow him, as he ends up challenging Nafumi to a battle as a way to free Raftalia. Now, Raftalia will be very confused as well as pissed off about what they're doing, but this is when Nafumi would then tell her to calm down as he accepts the challenge even though the king didn't try to force him in this timeline. Now we end up getting transferred to the arena as everyone will be cheering for Moriyasu, while some people end up cheering for Naofumi. As many people had their own split opinion on both of them, this is when Moriyasu ended up smirking, telling Naofumi that he's ready, he's ready to pay him back for what he did the very first time. This being the time where he first tried touching Naofumi's drip, and Naofumi sent him flying and crashing into a wall. As this is when the king will be there looking at everything with a smile on his face, as he tells Moriyasu to win the battle and put the devil of the shield in his place. As after this, the fight would then begin. And Moriyasu does not hesitate as he rushes at Nafumi using his strongest attack, trying to end the fight as quickly as possible, as well as trying to show Nafumi his true place. As everyone would cheer for Moriyasu, with Mayan and the king being especially loud about it, Nafumi would be there with a calm smile on his face, all the while Raftalia, who is currently right now being supposedly held down, can do nothing more but shake her head, as these people had no idea who they were dealing with. As just as Moriyasu would release his strongest attack and as it supposedly connects with Nafumi, as everyone begins to cheer once again, thinking that Nafumi has been put down, well, except for a few people, oh, well, I'm sorry, except for a few people, this is when suddenly the smoke would then clear, revealing that now, Fumi had blocked Moriyasu's attack with one finger. Everyone couldn't believe it. There was dead silence all around, as no one actually believed that the shield hero was going to actually be able to stop the, the spear hero. After all, the shield hero is supposed to be the weakest member, not the other way around. As Moriyasu tries his hardest to push up against, you know, Nafumi's finger, unfortunately, it was not budging at all, along with Nafumi. As Nafumi would look at the attack, he shakes his head in disappointment, as he apologizes to Moriyasu, surprisingly, saying that it seems as if he's gone a little bit rusty. As this went to the shock of everyone, Moriyasu would then have a generous gash open on his right shoulder, as he ends up falling to the ground, dropping his spear, as he ends up screaming out in pain. As everyone would look at the scene with dead silence, as they are not able to express what they even feel. As we will hear Nafumi continue to explain to Moriyasu exactly how he messed up, as apparently he got so rusty to the point where he was not able to actually change the degree of where the slash was going to hit. As originally, Nafumi actually planned for Moriyasu to lose his entire arm, not to have a simple gash on his shoulder. As now that seeing that Moriyasu was in the ground, and not only that, but now seeing that both Mine and the king were, were paying full attention onto him, this is where Nafumi decides to make a statement. As this when suddenly everyone everyone could hear it. Now Fumi's heartbeat. Now Fumi begins to explain exactly what's about to happen, as he explains to both the king and mine, as well as Moriyasu now, that the longer they try to approach him, the results will end up being similar to this. As this when Moriyasu will then die, just right in front of everyone. His body, everything would just be completely obliterated thanks to thanks to now Fumi's heartbeat. As everyone could not believe that the shield hero was dead, as the king would be there in pure silence and pure silent horror along with mine, this is when Nafumi would then bring him back. As Moriyasu would be reeling in in the shock of dying, as he'd be screaming in pure hysterical, he would then look at Nafumi begging him not to do it again, but unfortunately Nafumi doesn't listen. As he does and repeat as he rinses and repeats the same process over and over again. Moriyasu dies thanks to Nafumi's heartbeat. 
Nafumi brings him back, Moriyasu would beg for mercy, Nafumi would ignore him, and the same process continued. He would do it over and over and over again, as after finally doing it a couple of times, Nafumi by this point would end up returning him back for the last time. As by now, Moriyasu has been completely traumatized and can no longer even think properly at the very moment. As it got so bad to the point where even some of the hair on his head had turned white from the trauma. As no one said anything, no one could even breathe at the very moment. As Nafumi then turns his attention back to King and Mine, this is when the message was very clear once again. This is their last warning. They already got this is their second strike, alright? If they try this one more time, it's up for them. As after making sure the warning was clear, this is when Nafumi would end up walking away with Raftalia accompany him. And not only that, but she's also, she's also taking all the dessert from the banquet. There was no way she was not going to steal that. As after this, we now have a time skip with the rest of Nafumi's journey. Now, Nafumi by this point, he's actually keeping tabs on all the heroes. As after realizing how idiotic Moriyasu is, he actually tried to find out of if the other heroes were actually competent. And... To not really his surprise, every last one of them were complete idiots. Ren had actually left a dragon's corpse, and this corpse actually ended up creating a new plague in a nearby village. This village was actually dreaded with this plague. I'm sorry, with with this plague for quite a while, until now Fumi had actually arrived to fix it. And the thing is, this was so deadly to the point where now Fumi had to literally teleport there. He couldn't even travel there by foot because legit it was that deadly. If he was away for any longer, everyone would have died. As Nafumi was able to heal and not only that but get rid of the entire dragon's corpse, preventing it from spreading any more of this plague. As Iski also fucked up as he left an entire village alone without its king, causing it to literally fall apart and slowly but surely end up fading away from existence. If it wasn't for the help of Nafumi, they would have completely disappeared. The village would have been completely wiped off the map and all its people would have been extinguished. Luckily Nafumi was able to save it once again. It was able to establish trades and was able to give them the proper goods that they needed. But still, the, every single one of these documented cases really showed how idiotic these heroes were. And now Fumi was just making sure to keep it all there, as it was going to be piling up. So that way when he ends up making sure that every last one of these things blow up in these guys' faces. As we now turn our attention back to Nafumi as he was taking care of the latest incident, this is when he will once again be called upon by the kingdom as he needs to take care of another wave. Now, Nafumi would listen to this and he decides to go on his own accords, since now that Nafumi does not have the system, he has to find out where it is by himself, but luckily, since he's able to sense where exactly the next wave was coming, he was able to teleport there right before the other heroes. Now, eventually the other heroes arrive and they all immediately like, glare at Nafumi, since they had their own bias towards him. But just as they glare at him, this is when the wave would then begin, causing all the monsters to flood in as every last one of them would then rush over to take care of it. Now, Fumi would just simply walk as every single monster would actually try to approach him, but he would annihilate them without a single thought, as they stood no chance against him. As now Fumi continues walking and demolishing every last one of these creatures, this will go on for a couple of minutes until he eventually decides that he's had enough, as you see, the heroes were taking way too much time. So with that thought process, now Fumi then teleports as he arrives at exactly on top of the ship where they're fighting off against the boss, except there was two of them. One of them being the, you know, skeleton skull captain, and the other one being this weird soul eater. As it was currently moving around the air, and each time they could kill it off, it would return back. As the heroes would then argue about what they should do next, as they begin to argue which boss they should take down, this one suddenly, both of the bosses that they were currently fighting would then be pierced by black flames. As this would be from none other than Nafumi. Nafumi would walk onto a ship, releasing a pressure as he calls every last one of them idiots and incompetent as this will cause the rest of the heroes to immediately be quiet in Nafumi's presence. Well, everyone except for Moriyasu. He still has some PTSD from the last fight against, against Nafumi, and due to that, it began to make him act wildly. As just simply being the presence of Nafumi, he's not able to think clearly, as he instantly begins to attack Nafumi, telling him to get away. Now, everyone watched in pure silence and in shock, as the only one who was really happy about this was none other than mine, as she was thinking that Moriyasu had got Nafumi off guard. But as the attack was approaching, Nafumi would do the same thing, blocking it with one finger, as he tells Moriyasu to sit down. And this would have the desired effect as Moriyasu would collapse down onto his knees, unable to do anything right now, as he felt this pressure set upon him. As Nafumi would turn to the two bosses as they were trying to get up and trying to fight back against him, this is when everyone would watch in shock as Nafumi begins to actually play a game with the two of them, 
knocking them down and beating them up as if they were nothing. Before finally he decides to finish it off, as he brings both of them into a swirl of flames, killing them off instantly, leaving nothing behind. All the while the rest of the heroes just simply watch in pure amazement, as he couldn't believe that the shield hero actually beat the two bosses that they were struggling against, the entire group. As every last one of them will be there shocked in silence, this is when Iski as well as Ren would then begin to tell Nafumi to stop using his hacks, as they couldn't believe the fact that he was still cheating even now. Now Nafumi would hear their complaints and everything, but he just simply ignores them until he senses a presence. As suddenly, this is when we end up seeing someone end up falling from the sky and landing directly on the ship. And this person was different, as she was stronger than everyone that was on the ship, except for Nafumi as this would actually be the otherworldly hero. Now everyone will be wondering who she is as this is when the rest of the heroes begin to question her only for her to completely ignore them and focus her attention on Nafumi, as she blatantly tells them all that every last one of them do not deserve the title of hero except for the shield hero. But as she looks at Nafumi she'll be actually confused cause she doesn't see the shield on Nafumi. She begins to ask what happened to it with Nafumi saying that it was too weak and not worth his attention. And hearing this she couldn't believe what she was hearing. You can't just simply throw away the weapon like that, it's impossible. As she looks at Nafumi flabbergasted for a few seconds, this is when she then begins to laugh, telling Nafumi that he was amusing, as this is when we then see the fight between the fan hero and the shield hero. But it was less of a fight and more of a massacre as Nafumi was able to completely destroy any of her attacks as she wasn't able to do anything against him. Whether it be close quarters or long range, it didn't matter as she wasn't able to keep up with Nafumi. It got so bad to the point where Glass honestly thought about running away, but she couldn't do that since the fate of her world deserved, you know, depended on defeating the other heroes. But as she was trying her best though, Nafumi was able to pick up on her desperation, as he actually grabs a hold of Glass and ends up running away with her, all the while everyone else just looks at them in confusion, uh, in, I'm sorry, in confusion and in shock. As eventually, after getting far away, this is when Nafumi begins to question Glass, asking why she was trying to attack him, or better yet, the rest of the heroes. Not that he really cared about the rest of them. As Glass tries to remain silent, not wanting to give information to Nafumi, eventually Nafumi is able to persuade her as she begins to explain exactly what's going on, as apparently other worlds will fall if the other heroes are not taken down. It is not just her own world, it's Nafumi's world as well. And Nafumi, after hearing this, just looks at her for quite a few seconds, before suddenly just laughing and chuckling in her face. She looks at Nafumi both flustered and embarrassed as well as anger as she asked Nafumi what's so funny, as she couldn't believe that he was over here making fun of the fact that her world might be destroyed and his world might be destroyed if they don't take out each other. As she looks at Nafumi angrily, this is when Nafumi would then stop laughing as he begins to tell Glass that that won't happen, not if he had anything to say about it. As after all, he is the Demon King, which means he stands above everything in this world and everything beyond it. As after making this wild claim, Glass will look at Nafumi, calling him ridiculous, but unfortunately time had already ran up. As now that the boss was defeated, that means the way was done. As Glass went to return back to her own dimension, all while Nafumi ends up sending her off as well as getting teleported back. Now Nafumi would actually end up arriving in front of the king's presence, as unfortunately the king could not let Nafumi go, as he begins to demand Nafumi to release his secrets about what he knew about the woman, and not only that, but he wants Nafumi to give all his techniques to the other heroes, saying that he doesn't deserve it. But now Fumi just simply laughs, telling the king that he has no authority over him, and also calling the, the king a filthy pig, which pissed him off greatly as he tries to order the guards to take Nafumi away, but once again, none of the guards actually approach him, mostly because of the fact that they're not able to, as Nafumi had already put up a force field that literally protected him from everyone else trying to approach him. As he looks at the king with an amused expression, telling him that at the end of the day he will always end up being beneath him, which once again causes the king to get angry as Nafumi will walk away with the king screaming at the top of his lungs, Devil of the Shield, as we now do another time skip. Now Fumi by this point in the story decides to actually go on a little bit of adventure, exiting out of the kingdom, as he simply decides just to travel around the world and enjoy himself. Along with him will be his companions, this being Ralph Talia, as she was his assistant, so due to that she actually accompanies Nafumi throughout the entire journey. The two of them just spend time going from village to village as Nafumi will be indulging himself in different treats and everything, trying to find out more about the culture and overall just simply enjoying himself. But during this point though, as they were doing this entire travel, Nafumi would end up encountering this girl who is currently right now being harassed by a bunch of bandits. Now he ends up taking care of the bandits in an instant, as the girl would thank him only for her to be surprised as she points at Nafumi, saying that it was you. Now Nafumi would be very confused until suddenly this is when the girl would then reveal that she was actually the second daughter to the king. 
this being Melty. And you see, Melty was actually looking for the shield hero as I right right after Nafumi had left the kingdom, she actually talked to her father as she was actually paying a visit. And the truth is she was trying to make her father treat the shield hero fairly, even though he was quite stubborn, he would have done it nonetheless for his little girl. As after that, she actually decided to hunt down the shield hero so that she can discuss to him about, you know, treating her father right. But unfortunately, Nafumi was going way too fast and was heading with to way too many places that she couldn't keep up with him until now. As after explaining all this, as I was trying to talk Nafumi into being nicer to her father, unfortunately Nafumi is not opened up to the idea at all. But he does end up telling her that he would at least be cooperative to her father if he ends up earning his respect, or better yet, if he ends up changing his ways. And mostly after hearing this, realized that that was possibly going to be the best deal she could get for now, so she decides to agree with it. Unfortunately though, she's going to have to stay and accompany Nafumi on his little adventure, mostly because of the fact that she's way too far away from the kingdom, and not only that, but her escorts had just simply abandoned her, leaving her alone to the bandits. Luckily, Nafumi was there to stop it, of course. As after this, Nafumi will continue going on his little adventure, a little bit of an expedition, before finally deciding to return back to the kingdom. But as Nafumi was returning back to the kingdom, though, this is when he would then be approached by none other than six guards, as they all begin to accuse Nafumi of stealing the princess. Now Nafumi would listen to this with a raised eyebrow, as this is when suddenly Moriyasu would then step in along with the rest of his party. As Moriyasu has by this point completely lost his mind, he couldn't handle it any further, and finally after finding out that Nafumi supposedly had kidnapped the, you know, the king's daughter, this is when he finally snapped, as he tells Nafumi that he's gonna end him and make him pay for everything that he's done. Nafumi looks at Moriyasu with a raised eyebrow, as he takes into account that every last one of Moriyasu's party members will look at him with disgust with the only one who will currently be smirking will be none other than mine. And this is when Nafumi was able to connect the details immediately. Cause you see, when Melty actually left the well left the kingdom, unaware to her was the fact that mine had already ended up paying her guards to abandon her, as she wanted Melty to actually die so that way she can be the next in line for Queen. And not only that, but if, she're, if they're able to frame the death on the shield hero, that means that his reputation as well as business could go down. So overall, every single one of the events that are about to transpire is because of Mine. As Mine will look at Melty, telling her that she's going to save her sister, although deep down she'll be very pissed off, mostly because of the fact that she wished Melty was dead, but already had a plan for it because she planned to, you know, take her out when everything is finished. This is where we then get a fight between Naofumi and the rest of Moriyasu's party, and including Moriyasu. As Moriyasu rushes to attack Nafumi using a meteor spear, Nafumi will once again just dodge out the way of the attack as he simply looks at Moriyasu with a smile on his face before turning to mine telling her that this was going to be strike 3, and now she was out. And this will actually terrify mine before she suddenly ends up smirking confidently telling Nafumi that he can't do anything. But as Moriyasu is keeping Nafumi occupied supposedly, this is when mine would actually turn her attention to the rest of the party members ordering them to take care of Raftalia saying that she has no right to be in her, in her presence. As the rest of the party members can do nothing more but agree to it, considering the fact that Melty, I'm sorry, that Mine is the princess, so they have no choice but to obey her, this is when Mine would then turn her attention back onto Melty, as she begins to act a magic telling Melty that it seems as if this was going to be the end of the line for her. As she begins to attack Melty, pretty much declaring that she's going to become the next queen, and that Melty should just stay in her place. All while Melty continues trying to fight off against Mine, but unfortunately, She's still way too young and way too inexperienced for this. As she continues trying her best to fight off against mine, we will then turn our attention back to Nafumi as he was facing off against Moriyasu. Moriyasu would be attacking wildly, causing multiple amounts of, well, property damage and multiple other things without a care in the world, as he would be telling Nafumi that he doesn't deserve this power, he doesn't deserve to exist, and overall he just simply does not deserve anything at all. And Nafumi, after hearing this and hearing this man complain, as Moriyasu by this point was truly losing his mind, as Nafumi just simply flicked him on the forehead and this was enough to send Moriyasu flying, and even give him a concussion. But even when he got hit in the forehead, Moriyasu just simply got up as he begins to scratch himself wildly as he tells Nafumi that that did nothing to him as he rushes at him, at him crazily. Nafumi will look at Moriyasu telling him that this was going to be his final mistake as Moriyasu just tells Nafumi to die, rushing at him with his ultimate attack. And Nafumi seeing this had enough as he just simply takes away the spear from Moriyasu. Moriyasu will look at his hand in shock as he then looks at the spear, demanding Nafumi to give it back as he rushes at Nafumi, throwing a punch, only for Nafumi to then suddenly punch him in the face, as this will send Moriyasu flying and crashing into the ground. Everyone will be there in pure silence as this is when Nafumi would then look at the spear, 
and to the surprise of everyone, he begins to channel his own magic through it, as Nafumi will continue overriding the spear. And he will continue doing this as slowly but surely the spear begins to crack, and Moriyasu, he could feel it. He could feel his power slipping away. He looks at Nafumi before telling him not to do it, as he actually begins to slowly beg for him to stop, but unfortunately Nafumi was not stopping at all, as he continues applying more magic and more pressure, until eventually the spear would then suddenly snap and before it suddenly ends up breaking apart into multiple pieces, right in front of everyone. And Moriyasu, after losing the spear, could not believe it, as his once holy and divine power that he supposedly had was now gone, as he tried to call upon the system, but the system was gone by this point, as the only reason he had the system was cause of the spear, but now that he no longer had the spear, he no longer had the system, which means he no longer had his powers. He looks at Nafumi wildly, asking him what the hell had he had done, as he pretty much took away the title of hero from him. He doesn't have his abilities, he can't protect everyone, and that means this world is gonna doom thanks to the waves. As Moriyasu ends up glaring at Nafumi with bloody murder, as he rushes at him, screaming at the top of his lungs, this is when Nafumi just simply looks at him, before finally having enough as he taps Moriyasu in the forehead, telling Moriyasu that he's already served enough time. As Nafumi begins to explain to Moriyasu that he was never a hero, and more or less he was a failure, as he tells Moriyasu to get out of his sight. As using his magic, Nafumi is actually able to send Moriyasu back to his own world, which Moriyasu ends up telling him not to do so, but unfortunately it was too late, as he will be enveloped in a golden glow and soon ends up disappearing from the rest of the, of the world of Shield Hero, as now it was only down to three cardinal heroes. Mine, who currently right now was actually witnessing everything, would look at Nafumi in shock as she screams out in pure horror. She couldn't believe that the spear hero was gone. As she looks at Nafumi angrily, this is when Nafumi would then turn his attention back to mine, as this is when he begins to approach her. But before Nafumi can get too close, this is when suddenly a golden glow would then fall from the sky, as it was actually going to land directly on Nafumi as well as the rest of the group. As Nafumi ends up looking at the thing, he ends up actually shooting his own attack, which ends up actually countering the beam, causing a ginormous collision as well as a bunch of dust to settle around the entire area. As we finally see the dust settle, we end up seeing Nafumi who was completely fine along with everyone else that was caught in the blast as this is when we would then hear the approach of the Pope as well as the rest of the church. Now you see, Mine seeing the church would instantly begin to scream at them for their attacking her, as she thought that they had an agreement, but unfortunately the church didn't see it that way, as the church had decided that they're going to actually end up taking out Mine as well as the rest of the kingdom, considering the fact they see it fit that they're no longer able to rule this kingdom. And they also decided to take down the heroes, this being Ren and Itsuki from before, thanks to Mine's help, and now they're going to take down the shield hero, or at least that's what they thought. As the Pope begins to tell Nafumi that he is the devil of the shield and that means that he needs to be put down in the name of his lord, Nafumi will listen to all this before telling them that that would be impossible, as he ends up looking at them quite arrogantly. This ends up pissing off the Pope as he begins to attack Nafumi using the weapon that they forge, as multiple people will pray for the weapon causing it to get stronger as he once again shoots another beam at Nafumi, who this time he doesn't even shoot a beam back, he just simply deflects it with a simple slab from his hand. Now the Pope would look at Nafumi interested, but he would just shrug it off as he continues trying to attack Nafumi with Nafumi just deflecting everything. And this will go on for quite a while until the Pope had enough as he decides to actually change the weapon into that of a sword, as he sends a ginormous holy slash at Nafumi. Now this will surprise everyone as Nafumi seeing the sword would just dodge out the way as this is when the Pope begins to honestly bless the sword and begins to pretty much praising it, saying that this is the weapon of a god and something that Nafumi can never wield. And Nafumi, after hearing this, would surprisingly agree, until suddenly he ends up stating that he has a weapon way better than it. As this was suddenly, Nafumi would end up summoning out something from a pocket dimension. A sword. As this sword would be very demonic and very powerful, as literally just his presence alone was literally shaking the entire area. As the Pope would look at the blade as well as Nafumi, as he says that that should be impossible, with Nafumi telling him that as long as he exists, everything is possible. As this is when Nafumi then tells him that this is going to be the end. Yet the Pope couldn't allow it as he decides to activate the full ability of his weapon as many followers actually begin to pass out unconscious as he activates the cathedral. As the Pope begins to explain to Nafumi once again that it doesn't matter if his sword is powerful as at the end of the day, he still ends up wielding the weapon of a god and Nafumi is nothing compared to them. And Nafumi after hearing this just shrug it off considering the fact that he tells the Pope that he is not a god and it doesn't matter if he has a weapon of one. As this is when Nafumi would then do something shocking. As the entire cathedral would then be formed, Nafumi would end up destroying it with a simple slash of his blade, as the Pope would look at him in shock. 
As he looks at Nafumi, unable to believe that he actually was able to overpower the weapons, a weapon that, that was blessed by the gods, he couldn't believe it. As he looks at Nafumi and curses him out, he tries to attack him one last time, only for Nafumi to appear right in front of him. And seeing him there, the Pope with no hesitation would actually swing full force at Nafumi, with Nafumi doing the same thing. As both blades would clash, everyone would see the collision actually causing a ginormous impact as the Pope would begin smirking, thinking that he won, as this would go on for quite a while. The entire area will be, will be white around him as he fully believed that he won in the collision and that the shield hero was gone. However, unaware to the Pope though was the fact that not only did he fail, but the holy weapon he had crafted had been completely demolished and destroyed. And as for the Pope, he was actually already dead. As legit, now Fumi had pretty much made it to where as soon as he died, he pretty much is going to be stuck there in all eternity, living in the exact moment that he passed away for all of eternity. As everyone who looked at the fight as well seeing how it all ended up so quickly, they couldn't believe it. They were all spooked. As many people who were following the, the Pope would actually begin to step away from Nafumi as they all collapsed down to their knees begging him to spare their lives with Nafumi just looking at them coldly. Now mine who also saw everything would be terrified as well as is when Ren and Itsuki would then arrive trying to help out in the fight but unfortunately the fight was already taken care of. As this is when finally the Queen of the Kingdom would eventually end up arriving as he says it's finally time for them to get everything in order. As this is where we now change scenes. Now you see, after taking care of the Pope and all the incident that happened with the church, we will eventually end up having the trial for both the King and mine. Now the King will be trying to disagree with this trial immediately, trying to, trying to force his authority, but unfortunately, the Queen had more power over him. And not only that, but there was nothing they were going to be able to do, as the only thing they were able to do is glare at the shield hero. As this is when the trial would then begin, with the Queen pretty much revealing everything that the King and his daughter actually did. Now, eventually, the king's crimes were obviously very well detected. I mean, it was pretty obvious this man had his own bias against a shield hero after their very first encounter. But what mine did was surprising, even to the king, as he didn't know that she would take it this far. As the spies actually caught mine when she was actually slipping the money to the, you know, guards that were supposed to escort Melty, even telling them to leave her there to die and everything. They saw all the, they saw the planning that she was doing, all the chaos she started, and the king could not believe it. As he asked mine if it was true with mine trying to declare that it wasn't only for her to end up getting hit by the slave crest considering the fact that the queen had actually placed it on her as everyone would see the true colors of both the king and his daughter as they're not able to do anything as eventually after this trial would go on for quite a while it, the queen would then sentence both of them to being guilty as she actually wanted to sentence them to execution which surprised everyone since they couldn't believe how cruel she was being to her own family but now fumi was able to tell this woman was literally breaking down on the inside she was literally crying and he could already tell that this woman was going to do something drastic to prevent this. So this is when Nafumi decides to step in. As he actually says that since he's the one who actually had to suffer the most, he should be the one to actually give them their own punishment. And everyone would look at Nafumi surprised as the queen would actually agree to this as she wondered what Nafumi was going to do. If he was going to threaten the lives or any of them or if he was going to actually end them, she wouldn't mind it's just the fact that she wants him to take her life rather than theirs. As the first guy that Nafumi ends up approaching will be none other than the king, as the king will glare at Nafumi as he wonders what exactly he's going to do to him, with Nafumi declaring that not only is the king supposed to be stripped of his royal status as he's now no longer the king, but he actually has to work and live far away from the kingdom. And everyone will be surprised at this as the king tries to say that that can't be possible only for the queen to allow it as she much rather have this happen to her husband than for him to be killed. As the king couldn't believe it, he lost his status. He lost his wife practically, and now he's going to be sent far away, not being able to see none of them. As he glares at Nafumi, we were suddenly in the breaking down. This is when Nafumi would then turn to mine, as she was going to get the worst of it. As mine, seeing Nafumi approaching, would try acting all innocent and cutesy, as she even tries to flirt with Nafumi, trying to see if he would actually lessen the punishment on her, or overall just forgive her, but Nafumi was having none of it, as this is when he then decides to finish her off. As with the snap of his fingers, mine would be completely disappeared, there'll be nothing as all there would be would be blood. Everyone would look at the scene in shock with the king crying out for his daughter and the queen literally hyperventilating and unable to believe that her daughter was gone as everyone couldn't believe what Nafumi done. As Ren and Iski would look at the scene in pure shock and horror as they actually thought about rushing at Nafumi to prevent this, this went to the surprise Nafumi would end up bringing back mine. Except she didn't look exactly the same as she used to be. As when mine is brought back, she actually ends up losing her youth as well as her beauty as she actually looks extremely old. Now, that does not mean that she's actually old. In fact, she's incredibly young. It's just the fact that she looks so old and has lost a lot of her beauty to the point where 
the chances of her getting a guy are extremely slim to nothing. As Mine ends up looking around as everyone will look at her in pure horror and many of them looking away from her in disgust, this is when she then asks what was going on until suddenly this is when Nafu ends up summoning out a mirror that he tells her to take a good look. As Mine would reel back in horror, she screamed out in agony as her once youthful and some might even say beautiful appearance was now gone. As she couldn't believe everything was taken away from her, her beauty, and now it seemed to be her youth. As this is not for me, wouldn't say this was going to be the price that she paid. As Mine will look at her appearance in pure horror, as she then looks at Nafumi, begging him to just end her or just to change her back, but unfortunately Nafumi was not going to do anything. As it got so bad to a point where Mine even tried to end her own life, but unfortunately it failed miserably, as she actually had super regeneration. As Nafumi pretty much told her that she's actually going to be living like this for quite a long time, all the way until she eventually does end up reaching 100. As Nafumi pretty much told her that this was going to be the price that she paid. As Mine can't even end herself now, she has to now stick to this ugly form for many years to come. As Mine ends up finally breaking down in tears and in horror, as everyone ends up looking at her, feeling bad, but at the same time, understanding that this was something that she deserved. As the queen, although she was actually pretty horrified at first, she finally is able to breathe and calm herself down, as she tells Nafumi that this was a fitting punishment, as later on that day, Mine ends up locking herself up in her room, as she no longer wanted to be seen in public, and as for the king, unfortunately, he got shipped off to a different homeland, as unfortunately he had a lot of work to do and not only that, but he's no longer the king, so that means his old and comfortable life was now gone. All the while now Fumi's just reigned supreme as after that, he would actually be compensated with a large amount of money as the queen would apologize for her daughter as well as her husband's actions, with Nafumi telling her that it was fine. As after this, Nafumi ended up leaving the area, although the queen tries to make him stay, unfortunately Nafumi was not for this, as he ended up leaving. But you see, as Nafumi ends up leaving though, he does end up leaving a little bit of information to the queen. As you know how I said that Nafumi was actually keeping tabs of all the incidents that the heroes had made, pretty much all the bad things they'd done? Well, he actually slipped this information to the queen, telling her to do what she wanted with it, and the queen already got the gist of the idea. As soon after Nafumi ended up leaving the kingdom and going on his own adventure, all the incidents that the heroes had done, pretty much every single bad thing that they did, was revealed to the public as this made the people actually think that Ren and Iski were bad heroes. As both heroes actually end up leaving the kingdom, feeling both ashamed and defeated. All the while, Nafumi would be praised for his exploits as well as all the good that he has done. As this is where we now move forward into the, into the future. Now in the future, Nafumi by this point has taken care of many problems. For example, the waves. As he had actually taken care of all the waves mostly by himself, although Ren and Itsuki had tried to help out, unfortunately they were not able to do anything. Ren had tried multiple times to get stronger than Nafumi, had tried accusing him of using hacks, but unfortunately, Ren had came with the cold, cold chilling reality about the fact that that's just the reality of things. Nafumi was always as strong, and it was never some hacks or any cheat codes like that, because this world isn't a video game, to Nafumi at least. No, this is just his reality. Something that he could shape whenever he wants. Another thing that eventually ends up happening is the fact that Nafumi does encounter the other heroes from the other world. Now they do end up having a little bit of a fight, but eventually Nafumi was able to beat all of them, as they actually thought that their world was now going to be destroyed because they failed. Only to be surprised when Nafumi ends up breaking the very rules of the world, as he ends up summoning out his sword to actually break the very rule that destroyed the world of the other heroes. As they couldn't believe it. As Nafumi had actually saved the hero's other dimension, as they're all internally grateful for him, with Nafumi telling them that it was just fine since life seems way more interesting. And not only that, but thanks to Nafumi preventing the destruction of the other world, he now has access to travel to the other world for more adventure, something that he actually does and actually very excited about. As we now turn to the end of Nafumi's story, as by this point Nafumi has completely gone in an, on an entire adventure. He had jumped through multiple different worlds, met multiple different heroes, seen different cultures, tried different food, and overall Nafumi has truly enjoyed his life. As honestly, this was probably the best thing that could have happened to him, and he's very pleased about how everything turned out. As Nafumi would end up reigning supreme as not only the strongest hero, but the person who kept the balance among the rest of the worlds. As this would be the end to what if Nafumi was Anno's Voligo's reincarnation. Thank you all so much for tuning into this what if, hopefully you guys do enjoy. It's your host, Sage Samurai, and now he's signing off. Peace, and have a lovely day.